Awesome. Recording has started. Good morning, Angela. How are you? Good morning, Kathy. I am well. Good, good, good. It's been, um, as usual, busy for both of us as we're mm -hmm. gallivanting around and chatting with people and trying to figure out what's going on and getting ready for an election at the end of May. Um, every day brings something interesting to talk about, which is probably why we talk almost every day to try mm -hmm. and sort out the issues in the circumstances and situations. Yesterday, was a bit of a blow up when we both saw on social media some different posts, different people are covering this, although mm -hmm. not very well, I have to say, um, with the two two of the Western premiers getting ready to hopefully do a little more than write strongly worded letters because we've got somebody in Ottawa who wants to get all up in our business. Again. Again. <laughs> again. Again. Lord. But you know what makes me so angry about this? Is they want to, they basically want, uh, I'm going to choose my words wisely. <laughs> they, I won't say what I want to say. They, they want to use the Aboriginal population, the First Nations, to do their dirty work. Yeah. That's what it amounts to, to take over our resources. They want to divide and conquer that way. It's disgusting. Well, and you know what? I mean, but this is their modus operandi, so to speak, is that they will move in on an area that is not constitutional. So we saw that during the, the COVID situation where, you know, let's set aside all of our constitutional rights, but we have to attach a virtue to it, right? Mm -hmm. And so in this case... David Lametti, the federal minister of justice, made the comment that um, they are looking into rescinding the 1930 agreement that was made between the feds and Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba when it came to ownership over our resources. Yeah. And as you stated, what's the virtue that they've attached to it? Oh, it's it's for the sake of the indigenous people. Yeah. Right. Which yeah. I call BS on. I call BS. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It's I and, and I think from the little bit that I've seen, the indigenous people feel the same. They're not. I think there's some that are just saying, you know, something doesn't smell right here, um, which is good, which is good. And, and hopefully that helps to foster a conversation between the provincial leaders and the aboriginal leaders or the indigenous leaders rather than um, the feds dictating how that conversation is going to go well that's just it right like i mean as far as i'm concerned the feds are now irrelevant and and they made themselves yeah. irrelevant a number of years ago in increments yeah. over the last few decades right but yeah no we don't need them and we can forge our own relationships with our indigenous neighbors yeah. um Clearly, I mean, the fact that we still have so many Indigenous reserves, First Nations reserves, without decent water, you know, and, and that falls under the federal jurisdiction. I mean, they can't get something as basic as clean, safe water, right? Yeah. Why are we going to rely on them to get anything else right when it comes to our relationship with the First Nations? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I think this also touches on why it's so important for every province, not just Alberta, but every province within the country to do everything they can right now to, um, to distance themselves as much as they can from Ottawa and become as self-sustaining as possible because like this time, you know, okay, it affects Saskatchewan and Alberta right now. But that's only right now. It, it like let's not make the same mistake as as what we saw in COVID. Oh well, it's not affecting me yet, so I'm not going to stand up until it did. Right, exactly. And, and I, th I think that's a very good lesson for us to learn. Is that I know people don't want to you know, see the the country broken up, and 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 I get that to some degree. At the same time, if we're all going to survive. We're going to have to, the provinces are going to have to take matters into our own hands and look after our own people. We cannot be relying on the feds to do that. They clearly don't know how to do anything other than look after themselves. Right. 
Right. And, and I mean, it, when you're sitting on the Titanic, there comes a time when you have to acknowledge the fact that this thing's going down. Right. Effort. And as much as you don't want to, and as much of a party as it was and whatever, you get to that point where you don't have a choice. It's like, it's going down. So do we go down with it? Stating, oh, I'll never jump ship, you know, mm -hmm. because of my, my ideals or my whatever, my hopes, my dreams, my sentimentality. Or do we look at it and go, you know what, this thing's going down. And so if we want to save ourselves, we've got to, we've got to step off and do something different. We really do. And I think what an incredible opportunity we can open up for everybody from C to C to C. If we say, you know what, let's just, uh, let's just figure this out ourselves. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't need a, an overreaching government getting into our business, into our industries, into our, our homes. Like, I was flabbergasted, and I don't know why. I guess I just never realized or thought about it before when I learned that the federal government actually calls cities and municipalities to tell them, well, this is what you're going to do now. Oh. They don't even go through the... I just, you know, you presume there's this chain of command, and no. Nope. No, we saw that in Saskatchewan just a couple months ago. Was it Saskatoon? Yeah. That Trudeau just showed up there to announce this new program. Didn't even bother to alert the premier of Saskatchewan about it. Like the amount of disrespect and oh. presumptuousness. Is that what it is? I don't know what it is. I don't it's know. Like, you know. Arrogance. Like check yourself. Check yourself. Yeah. 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 And it, it all drives back to why you and I are so passionate about getting regular Albertans into the legislature. Oh, at absolutely. the end of the day. Yeah. Right. Because it's our lives that are going to be affected, not the career politician. The career well, politician that's just it. is yeah. not going to be affected. It's going to be us. It's going to be our families, our business, our livelihoods, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. our neighbors, our communities. And so we've got to get just regular Albertans into the legislature as independent candidates who are not stuck to a party whip but yeah. are instead completely accountable to the folks that voted them in there to oh, begin with. No doubt. No doubt. Right? Yeah. No, that's really, yeah. I mean, the system, I know people are like, oh, the system's not broken. You know, those liberals from the feds, it totally is broken. And, and mm -hmm. the very fact that, that, so many of us feel like we no longer have any representation anymore. And um, you had, Kathy, you had shared on one of your social media platforms. It was an interview, a lawyer, not necessarily an interview, but he'd given a bit of a speech at the National Citizens Inquiry about mm. the, the different structures of government and how, and I don't exactly remember the exact word he used, but it was something like we have turned, we've become an administrative society where the bureaucracies are running everything. The elected officials have handed the power that was given, that was given to them by their electorate. So as an electorate, we have certain rights. We have certain powers. We form a government and we give them some of that authority. So rather than me hiring my own personal security guard to stand outside my house every night, mm -hmm. we give the, I have that right to protect myself, but we give that right to our elected officials to then form, you know, like a provincial police force or municipal, or we have the RCMP, right? Yeah. But instead of taking that authority that had been given to them by the people and acting on it, they've gone and created all these different bureaucracies in these, what was the term I heard this last month? Quasi-judicial. Um, mm -hmm. that, was, that was used by our MLA to describe the um, oh. Alberta Utilities Commission. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. And, and what they do is Another they nice give thing. these bureaucracies this authority yeah, and and then they're untouchable because as yeah. a government, then they're like, oh, I need to, uh, you know, an arm's length type of thing because I it has to be impartial. Yeah, but that's not what we the people. So then we where where is our 
where is our representation in that process? And that's what this lawyer from this link that you had shared was talking about. And that's why during COVID, we had chief medical officers making decisions for the whole province, unelected, mm -hmm. unaccountable, appointed, right? Yeah. And and now, and we see how well that worked. It didn't, right? It didn't work at all. That's just it. That was Bruce Party's um, testimony with the oh, National Party's Inquiry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it yes, was so exactly. good. <clears throat> He's actually just very good to follow. Because mm. well, he is a he's also a professor, um, so he knows how to put things in English right. for the rest of us to understand. Yeah, and um, yeah, it it is it, it's the government has I guess obfuscated their duties. Yeah, to these authorities. Yeah, and it's like, well, I voted you in to make that decision, not you to hand it off to somebody else who will never be responsible for that decision. Well, even though they're making become... five hundred thousand a year. Well, exactly, exactly. But now it has now it's gone beyond our borders and it's become a global thing. Yeah. Right. And so when you look at, you have to look at like, why would David Lametti be talking about all of a sudden cracking open this almost a hundred year agreement? Yeah. Why? You know, and, and I saw some people were pointing out, well, you know what, when Biden was with Trudeau last week, they start, there was talk about mineral rights and that type of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if there's, if there's a globalist on the planet, it would be Biden and Trudeau. Right. Yeah. And, and so now it's gone even further than just our, our local guys or provincial or federal. It's become mm -hmm. global. So the little people down here, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at my window, I'm looking at the farmhouse next door here type of thing, mountains behind. Um, it's all ranch land. And we, like in this area, we're being asked to give up our livelihoods, mm -hmm. our lifestyle, our health, the value of our property, all these different things. We are being asked to do that with this giant um, wind turbine mm -hmm. project that Transalta is wanting to put in right between yeah. here and Waterton, we are being asked to make those sacrifices. And yet when you look at the legislation defining, you know, how they decide where these projects are being put so slanted towards the corporations and the global ideologies and not the people. So we, the small people make the sacrifice mm -hmm. for what? To whom? Yeah. You know, but that's exactly what it's come down to. And so, yeah, when you've got the justice minister making comments like that, you have to ask, where is this coming from? Who's going to mm -hmm. benefit from it? Because it certainly is not going to be the people of Alberta that will benefit from this. No. Nobody in Alberta. That's the thing. No. no. So we'll make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. For what? To who? Yeah. There are no yeah. answers. There aren't any answers. There's no answers at all. And um, I, I appreciate, you know, that Premier Smith came out swinging pretty hard by the looks of it this week on that. And, and that's good. Again, I go back. We need people in the legislature that are going to make sure she continues <laughs> to do we, that. I mean, we need some follow up. And yeah. I, if I if I remember correctly from the articles that were very quietly put out, and from the looks of it, the UCP have dropped the idea of an Alberta police force right now because of the cost. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, hold on a second. And I've made this point a few times. Um, it's not just about cost. No. It's not about cost. It's about taking away one less tie with a corrupt federal government that couldn't give a yeah. damn about us here. Yeah. They don't. It's cutting that tie. And that is priceless. Very that much. is priceless right now. So don't don't tell me, oh, yeah, it's not going to be cost efficient. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. And And so it's great that she came out swinging. She used the strongest terms possible, but we all know, we all know that strongly mm -hmm. worded letters don't go anywhere with the feds. Jason Kenney proved that over and over again. 
Daniel exactly. Smith has already written strongly worded letters. Is this just another strongly worded letter? Or are we going to back it up with some actual real action saying, you know, we're done with you and you're mm -hmm. over reach, and we're going to start with a provincial police force and yep. we're going to start with our own Alberta pension plan, just like Quebec has had for decades. So the NDP can scream and cry all they want. That's right. But the fact of the matter is Quebec has done this for decades and they've done very well. There's they have saying that we can't do the same thing. Well, and in fact, we'd be fools not to. And this is where the NDP starts hollering, right? Rachel was going on about, get your hands off our seat. Oh, constantly. constantly. Oh, my gosh. Which tells me right there she doesn't know what she's talking about at all. Because, first Constance. of all, there's hardly any cash in there to begin with. Because it's, it's been... unfunded liabilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on top of that, the whole thing that they want to want to invest that CPP in in order to supposedly make money on is is solar and wind. It's all the ESP stuff. It doesn't just listening... make money. Oh, I know. I was just listening to an interview. Oh, it was I think it was Jordan Peterson, and he interviewed a, the CFO of either Kansas or Kentucky. And there's a consortium of these CFOs. They have different titles depending on the state okay. who have come together and have basically given notice to some of the largest investment groups, you know, BlackRock, Vanguard, all that stuff, and basically said, you start fulfilling your fiduciary duty yeah. where you start to grow the money that we are investing with you or you're done. We, we will pull our billions of dollars of, of investment from you because investing in solar and wind and all these ESG, so the environmental social governance type mm -hmm. things, is not cutting it. No. These are people's pensions that we are dealing with. That's right. And if you can't do the job, we'll give it to somebody who will. That's and, right. and there are actually investment groups that are starting to crop up who are saying, we don't do that. We, we do, we will invest where these funds will grow. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, yeah, I mean, yeah. Rachel Notley and her ideologies to take our, our money or and Trudeau and the CPP to take our money and don't, you can't tell me, you cannot tell me that our CPP and it is separate from the federal ideologies. No. You you can't tell me that because the people who are running that, who are they hired by? Who are they chosen by? Who are they beholden to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I don't well, buy it for one second. No, and furthermore, if you go on the WEF's website and you go under partners, guess what's oh. listed under there? Yeah, CPP. CPP. Oh, and Rachel Notley. And true. True. <laughs> so yeah, she's on there. So it's like, come on, like, we're not stupid. Yeah. We know how to read. We and that's the thing, right? There's so many people out there that and we were over at friend's place this weekend and had this conversation. And, and it was a fair statement that the person made is, you know, we vote these people in, we should be able to trust them. Well, jokes on us. We, we can't, right. it, it's, um, it's just, it's too deep now. We, we, we've got to get involved and, and, and we had to admit, you know, we're, we're at fault for not, paying attention oh, all no, these no. years until now mm -hmm. and okay so we're paying attention now let's do something about it now which means there's going to be a lot of heavy lifting means there's going to be some change but if we don't i look at my kids and my grandbaby there is no other option but yeah. to get out of bed and do something about this right now no doubt no there's doubt just none yeah none and we've got to get this province to a place that's completely self-sufficient and sustaining as much as we can mm -hmm. as much as we can and that's like and that's not just with all the little trinkets that we use and have and are being spied upon through and everything else but i walk um like for uh fort sask vagreville driving around and and seeing all this pasture land and farmland mm. and agriculture and all the rest and i think yeah, they want to put windmills here where we should have greenhouses. Right. Like that greenhouses, guess what they do? They use CO2. Yeah. And we could eat. We yeah. would have absolute food security. 
as yeah. well as energy security here. Oh, yeah. And we would be benefiting our neighbors by buying from them. Like right now I get my eggs from my next door neighbor. I'm more than happy to give my money to them than to somebody who's got all their chickens, 10 of them in one little cage, you know, right. like yeah. there's just, it's just ridiculous. I, I think if we can get, if we can get our mindset wrapped around, what can I do to help my neighbor? What can I do to support my neighbor? Instead of, well, how am I going to save five cents? Right. And I get it, it's hard because many of us, us included, have had a really, really tough goal these last three years. So mm -hmm. I I get it. I'm in that same yeah, goal. I do too. Right? At the same mm -hmm. time, I want to see everybody here succeed. And I would much sooner support them and reap that harvest, literally. Right. Than no, anything totally else. With totally with you on that. And maybe we could even figure out these greenhouses so we could grow like bananas and pineapples. I don't know. But I'm not that, I'm not that smart. I don't know. But maybe somebody could. <laughs> <laughs> to still put in my smoothies with my right? Alberta dairy yogurt and right? dairy <laughs> cottage cheese. <laughs> Why not? No, I mean, we've got, oh, I don't know. This province is so great. Not only are we just so abundant in so many natural resources and, and the land to be able to do stuff with, um, but the ingenuity and, and the expertise and the skills, the education that we have here, it's phenomenal. I, oh, it I don't think there's anything that we, we couldn't figure out here, to be honest. Exactly. Exactly. We've been doing a great job of it so far. And now yeah. we're going to really have to kind of fight for our right to continue to do it. Yeah. Okay, that's that's the precipice yeah. we're at right now. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. And we'll keep talking about it. People got to keep talking about it. Well, I'm 100% behind Danielle Smith. Like, like keep swinging, girl. Mm -hmm. like, keep swinging and, and then start throwing some action in behind it. That's right. 100% behind that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I really do. Again, I, I'm, I'm harping on it like a, I don't know. I'm going to drive everybody nuts saying it. But we need people in the legislature that are not in cahoots with a specific party. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. We need that shake up. Most yeah. definitely. We need the fresh blood. We need folks who can say what they want to say and how they feel and yeah. have, you know, if their neighbors support them in that and say, yeah, we're going to, we're going to elect you to go to Edmonton and, and to represent us. Perfect. That's how it's supposed to be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I guess now we'll see what this week brings. It'll be something. <laughs> No, so, okay. So what's going on with you, Kathy? Have you got any meetings or anything coming up or what's I do, I do. We've got a fantastic group here. Let me make sure I've got the right address to where I'm going to be next Monday. Uh, this week I'll actually be working all week, but next Monday I'm going to be in Lamont at their uh, the Lamont Arena meeting room. So anybody who's around Lamont will know exactly where that is. We're going to be there at seven myself and a gentleman by the name of Mitch Sylvester, who I've never met. I'm excited to meet him. We're going to be talking about these land use bylaws. And um, when I'm talking about these things, I tend to, I, I like to connect all the dots. Nice. It's, it's bigger than what's just going on in your municipality. Sure. Um, right. It's bigger than that. And the provincial government has a monstrous role to play which is what mm. makes these elections so important and yeah. who you're going to put in there to see. So I'm going to be there um, on Monday. I also have to double check Westlock. Somebody from Westlock mm. reached out and asked me to go over there. So I'm going to go there. And Camrose wants me to go chat over there again about these land use bylaws. So that's what's going on. Um, Two Hills is also in the works, but I don't have any dates set yet. Got to be careful there because they're, of course, in calving season. So Right. Um, you're not going to get people out when when they've got to be at they're home all night pulling cows. Yeah. yeah, no, no yeah. doubt. No yeah. Doubt. So we're going to give them a little bit of time to to do what they need to do to make sure that we've got some hamburger on our table when it comes time. Right. That's for sure. <laughs> and yeah. pot roast, which is my favorite. But um, yeah, so Two Hills is coming. Lamont for sure on Monday at seven at the arena there. And then uh, I've got some dates being settled for Camrose and for Westlock. So it's going to be good. Sweet. Gonna That's happening. 
I know. It's just nice to, I think the best part, and I don't know, you maybe find this too, is when people say, oh, like you're just a regular person and you know all this. You just have to read. Yeah. I know it's boring, but. Yeah. Dig around. Dig around and don't be afraid to talk. Don't yeah. be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's really all it amounts to. And don't be afraid to push back a little bit. We don't have to be jerks about no. it at all. Um, but we do need to be mindful. We need to be very mindful. Um, well, knowledge and engagement, right? Yeah. I think knowledge often leads to engagement where people are like, oh, yeah, I need yeah. to get involved. Well, that's just it. Or you know what? Support the ones that are getting involved. And this is, I used to say this all the time when I was working in addictions and mental health. Uh, mm. And, you know, I, and I, it was in the nonprofit sector. So if I wanted a paycheck, I'd make people cry, right? And uh, <laughs> feel bad and, and want to support me in what I was doing. And, but I would literally say, you know, I get that you're not comfortable going to those homeless camps. I get that you're not comfortable going to the soup kitchen or, or to the shelters or, or doing home checks or things like that. And, and I get that it's, it's definitely not for everybody. Right. So help me do it. Help me right. help these people. Yeah, and, exactly. and I think, you know, I, I've come to learn that politics is very much the same. People don't want to get involved because it's, downright messy in fact it's mm -hmm. quite disgusting mm -hmm. um but that's and that's okay i respect that help me get in there then help right. help 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 angela get in there so angela what's what's going on in your in your neck of the woods because you've been um, all over the place with meetings last week so what's going on this week well okay yeah yeah we did like three town halls last week this week well this week i am more involved in what's going on with fighting this uh, wind turbine project just outside of Waterton. So tonight yeah. I'm actually presenting to Cardston Town Council. Um, yeah, we've done some interesting work. We got a hold of a, a topographical map and figured out, I mean, the height of these things and where the lights are going to be and then how far you're going to be able to see them. <laughs> no. Like, like just let's just, just take like you know the crown of the continent, the UNESCO Peace Park. The, yeah. You know, like let's just take that and just have these flashing red lights right outside the gate. <laughs> like it's like the most stupid. Like like Trans Alta. Like seriously, it's beyond wow. absurd. Anyways, okay, my little rant. So yeah, I'm presenting, <laughs> presenting to Cardston County on that tomorrow night. Um, I am gonna be in Arrow, not tomorrow night. Tonight, Cardston County, tomorrow, yeah. Arrowwood, doing a town hall. So I door knocked Arrowwood yesterday. Um, great conversation. It's such a cute little town. Just yes. love it. It's clean. It's well cared for. Like, you can see that mm. the people are engaged, right? It's just yeah. love it. Anyways, um, Arrowwood. And then Thursday, we have a town hall again for the Ripplinger Wind Project, this time out in Hill Spring, which is the village uh, that would basically be surrounded by these stupid things if they get, if Trans Alta gets their way. Um, and that's what I've got going. And then it'll just be door knocking because next week I've got Shaughnessy, which is um, right outside of Picture Butte. And we sent out like 2300 flyers last week for this mm -hmm. meeting that we're having just because like Shaughnessy is this tiny little community but it's surrounded by all these other tiny little communities so right. I'll be door knocking a bunch of tiny little communities for the next week type of thing. Yeah well and you know what so you're um we're creeping up on half an hour here but well mm. you just said something about flyers and mm. you had a comment by somebody who didn't know about one of your events. And you said, well, yeah, I sent out flyers. But if you've got something on your mailbox or at your post office that says you don't want flyers, you're not yeah, going to yeah. get it. Yeah. You're not. So anybody who does have that, I get it. I mean, I throw a bunch of them out every week as well. Right. However, you'll miss that one yeah. that you needed to know about, you know, in the midst of all of the what are mine like AW McDonald's and every other right. store along yeah. along the road. Um, but you'll miss that one if you have that sign up. So uh, it might be worth the while while these fights are taking place to kind of endure all those other flyers in order to make sure you're in the know with this other stuff. Right, exactly. And of course you can follow us on social media, but not everybody does it either, right? So no, exactly. Yeah, no, it's a really good point, Kathy. And yeah, that is a little bit of a little bit of a problem I'm thinking, but yeah. yeah. 
And I get it. There's a lot of junk mail out there. Yeah. But cool. Now, that said, uh, once the writ drops, then everything does get delivered. Just so right. everybody, that's my understanding. Anyways, if I'm wrong, somebody correct me on that, please. But I'm I'll ask at the post wrong. office I yeah. have to tomorrow or today to deliver more flyers. So, yeah. yay. Awesome. Well, let's see what shakes up this week politically, and then we'll see what we're talking about next week. Awesome. <laughs> right on. Well, have a great week, Angela. Thanks. You too.